As you can see, this morning we get to, um, I'm going to turn this on, I'm just going to make sure it works. Oh, look at that, it works. We love it when technology works, it's good. Um, isn't it cool to have a baptism this morning? Yeah, yeah it's so neat to, um, to see um, people confess their faith to Jesus um, through baptism, isn't it an amazing thing? Um, the awesome thing is in, in, in two weeks' time, we get to see another three baptisms, which is really incredible for us as a church, um, to see people coming to know um, deeper with their, um, with their Father, with Jesus. So, last week, um, I got to share with you guys a little bit of um, change, um, and it was a bit uncomfortable, because um, change is uncomfortable sometimes. Um, and the response that I called us to was to press into Jesus, to pray, to worship, and uh, to read our scripture. Um, and as I was um, preparing this week, I had another sort of message planned for this week, but God was pressing again back on my heart, no, Josh, take our church through what it means to pray, to um, to worship and to um, read scripture. So this morning, um, this message, for some of you who are, uh, if you are new to church this morning, this might be the first time you are hearing some of these things. Um, and I hope that it is helpful and encouraging to you. Um, for those of, that, of us who have been in church for a long time, um, some of these things are a little bit fundamental to our faith. But I hope this morning um, that this message rekindles a fire to be intimate with Jesus. That is my hope and my prayer this morning, is that we get to um, leave this place um, wanting and a desire to press in and seek God's face this morning. So, we're going to get right into it. Um, I've written lots and lots and lots of words this morning. Um, let's hear, hopefully I can read some of them. Here we go. I want to start with um, understanding... Understanding um, intimacy with God. So what is, actually, what is actually to be intimate with God? Intimacy with God is not a religious duty. Um, rather, it's a dynamic and it's a personal relationship with the creator, um, the creator of the entire universe. It involves a deep connection of the heart, soul, and mind with the one who was intimate with us and the one who knows us intimately. The Bible encourages us in James 4 verse 8. Um, it encourages us to come close to God, and God will come close to you. This invitation is, a, is an open door, which uh, an open door to experience the fullness of God's love, grace, and guidance in our lives. This verse encourages the believers to approach God with sincerity humility, and a desire for closer relationship with him. Uh, the message is twofold. It's twofold. So and, um, initially, it's for the believers. It says, come close to God. And it, it implies that believers are called to take the first step. It suggests an active and effort um, on their part to pursue connection with God. This involves aspects of prayer, of worship, of repentance, and commitment to living in accordance with God's principles. The awesome part and the promise that comes in this is the second part of God's promise and his response to us is that he will come close to you. And it conveys this promise as believers as we make the effort to draw close to God, God will in turn respond by drawing close to us. It reflects the idea that God is willing and eager to have a relationship with those who genuine, genuinely want to have relationship with him. The principles conveyed in this verse is not about proximity. It's not about finding somewhere to go, but it's about intimacy and depth of relationship between believers and their creator. So now we know a little bit of um, understanding. I want to talk about some pathways this morning. What are some pathways that we can have um, to be intimate with God? 
Um, and the first one this morning I want to touch on is prayer. Prayer is so powerful. Prayer is communication um, is foundational to any relationship. I know that very well with my wife. Um, if we don't communicate well, things in our home become uh, disjointed and things don't happen. And so communication is foundational to any relationship. Prayer is our direct line to God. A sacred dialogue for us where we pour our hearts, um, we pour out our hearts, we express gratitude, we seek guidance, and we listen for his voice. So church, how do we pray? I have five simple tips this morning on how we can pray. The first one is to pray simply. We might think we have to pray a passionate prayer, persuasive words so that God will hear us, but in reality, he listens to our shortest and our simplest prayers as well. The fewer the words, the better the prayer. Uh, that's what Martin Luther um, said. Uh, isn't that reassuring? It is for me. We can talk to God in everyday language, uh, just like we talk to our friends. We don't have to pray uh, long or drawn-out prayers. It can be short and simple. God delights in the simple word of praise, something like, Lord, I love you. That's a great prayer. He treasures the anguish in our prayers. God, give me patience. Oh, I've used that one a lot lately. Um, God, give me patience. That's been my most simplest prayer over the last little while. And he answers our prayer requests. Uh, the last one, he, he um, asked a simple request that we can give to God is, is this morning, God, give me strength for I need it. When we pray these simple prayers to Jesus, he hears us and he loves being in communication with us. So first tip, pray simple prayers. The second one is read the Bible and pray over these verses. And so have you ever um, had a one-sided conversation with somebody? Uh, someone who talked continually without actually listening to you? Um, the conversation didn't go very far, did it? Oh, I've had some of them. Hopefully I haven't been the person talking too much, maybe. Oh, I have to reflect on that now. Uh, we do the same thing to God sometimes. We pray without actually listening or reading um, the Bible. Scripture helps us to get to know God, and it brings our prayers to life. If you want to have a more effective conversation with God, as you pray, read Scripture. Oh, I've got these points. I should bring them up. Here we go. All right, so we've got uh, pray simply, read the Bible and pray over, over the verses. The third one, make prayer active and multi-sensory, okay? Um, prayer grows dull when we turn it purely into a mental exercise. God made us creative beings. He, so why don't we bring this creativity into our prayer lives? Um, lighting a candle and smelling the fragrance of that candle um, sends different signals into our brains. It's time to pray. Um, and it can bring a, sink, a sacred sense of awe um, in just a few minutes. Listening to music can help us when we pray. It can help us to focus on the words and pray to God. Many people enjoy doodling or drawing um, when they pray or painting. Uh, some people like going for a walk. Some people like um, picking up things and holding them in their hands, some things that are important to them and that they're praying about. Some people I know keep a prayer journal, uh, making lists of requests that um, keep their mind alert as they're praying. Occasionally they write um, longer prayers like a letter in this. Um, a prayer journal builds faith. When you, look over, when you look back over it, this prayer journal can build faith when we read the prayers and see the answers that have come to these prayers. Um, but just remember, you don't just have to sit in a room quietly to pray. You can make it active and multi-sensory. Number four, make prayer an integral part of your day. Um, the verse always baffled me. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances. That's from 1 Thessalonians. Um, is it really possible to pray without ceasing? Ooh. How about trying an experiment? Start and end your day 
with a prayer. Lift up short prayers to God as often as you can and as often as you think about throughout your day. Pray over your schedule. Pray when you're driving in the car. Lift up, um, ask God to help you with your to-do list. Uh, When you're having trouble, uh, pray. When you hear a troubling news report, pray. If you hear the uh, fire siren go off, pray. Lift up these situations to God. Uh, pray for your, for your family. When you uh, have a thought about your, your husband or your wife or your children or your mum or your dad or your uncle, pray. When we have these thoughts, let's pray. Look for moments in our lives, in our everyday lives, where we can pray, going back to number one, simple prayers to Jesus. And the last tip that I have, I'll go through this. The last tip that I have is pray expectantly. Prayer becomes a lifeless exercise when we are not looking for answers to it. Jesus invites us to expect God to work. Um, Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and everyone who knocks, the door will be open to them. It comes from Matthew 7, 7 to 8. How much more exciting is prayer when um, our eyes are kept open to watch what God is doing through our prayer life? Sometimes I wonder how many answers I miss because I don't really expect God to respond to my prayers. So, pray simply. Read the Bible and pray over the verses. Make prayer active and multi-sensory. Make prayer an integral part of your day and pray expectantly. So church, how about we just get started today? That's easy. Uh, Don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged if you get distracted like I do. Just get back on track. Pray and watch for God's answers so you can thank him. He might answer differently than you expect, but his answer will always be better than what you actually had in mind. Pathway to intimacy with God is to pray. Um, The second pathway to intimacy that I want to look at this morning um, involves reading the Bible. It's good when I laid it out before I started, eh? So we know where we're going. This is good. The Bible is God's living word. A treasure trove of wisdom, comfort, and revelation. Regular meditation on scripture allows us to discern God's will and understand his character and draw close to him. Psalm 119 verse 105 reminds us that God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So how do we read our Bible? Oh, more helpful hints hints from Josh. That's our, our, maybe I should have said that, helpful hints from Josh this morning. No, here's some things that that I use that um, help me to read my Bible. The first one is to choose a Bible that is easy to read. Here's the truth. If we don't understand it, we're not going to read it. The Bible was originally written in Hebrew and Greek. I don't read Hebrew or Greek. Uh, And one of the earliest translations was the New King James Version. Again, some of those words in there make me, my mind boggle. But today, we have a variety of versions to choose from. Some translations focus on being more precise, and others are best for Bible studies. Um, While others, you know, know, sorry, some are more precise and ideal for Bible studies, where others are more focused on readability and are great for devotions and relationship. Uh, If you're beginning to read your Bible, uh, my recommendation is to find a Bible that is a New Living Translation. Uh, This version is uh, very, very readable. Uh, while still being literal and translation, and literal in its translation. The other thing I love about the New Living Translation is the way that it includes gender uh, inclusivity in its word. It is, it is a really good translation to start. Um, if you don't have a physical Bible, we have phones where we can download some incredible apps these days. And one of the apps that I would um, suggest is U Bible. Um, 
yeah, the U Version Bible. Uh, you can download that, and there's a, you can change different translations in that in that app, and it's awesome to see that. So choose a Bible, find a Bible that you can read and that you can understand. The second is uh, you don't have to start in the beginning. Like most books, uh, you would start and open at page one, and um, that would be cool. Because if you started in the middle of the book, that would be a bit weird, wouldn't it? But the Bible isn't like that. The Bible contains 66 different books, okay? Uh, and it's all compiled in, into this one book. Some of the Old Testament is sharing um, the story of God and its people before Jesus. Um, and the 26 books in the New Testament pick up the birth of Jesus um, and, and looking at, um, at his life and what comes after that. If you're new to the Bible, my recommendation is to start in the Gospel of John. Okay, it's the fourth book in the New Testament. And uh, it's, a, it's God, uh, John's eyewitness account to the life of Jesus. John was one of uh, Jesus' closest disciples. John's account is both riveting and informative. Uh, John's purpose in writing is to help believers, uh, to help us believe, making the, um, sorry, John's purpose in writing is to help us believe, making it the ideal place to start. So if you're wanting to start somewhere, start in John. It's a great book to start. The other um, key way that I read through my Bible is I pick a verse um, and I work my, or pick a book and I work my way through that book. If you're anything like me, um, you probably need a reading Bible plan, okay? Um, if I didn't have a reading Bible plan, uh, I would get lost in this book. And so um, it's good to have a reading Bible plan. And that version Bible that I've talked about has a whole bunch of different reading plans on there. Uh, you can be going through a book of the Bible, you can search that on that app, and it will take you through a reading plan. It's quite neat. also adds in some daily devotions and some other things for you. Um, it's a great tool to use to read your Bible alongside. So pick, uh, pick a book, go through it, uh, and, sorry, and, yeah, find um, some study material to go through that book, and using that app is a great way to do it. Number four, just read a little bit every day. Uh, getting God's Word into your life doesn't have to take a long time. Uh, start with five or ten minutes. Uh, it's better than none. Sometimes less is actually more, uh, especially if reading less means you actually remember it. Choose a time and a place that is convenient for you. Lots of us read our Bible in the morning um, as we wake up, and the first thing, uh, choosing to spend time with God before my daily activities. Uh, but mornings aren't always your thing. My routine has changed because uh, I'm not the first one awake anymore in my house, that's Felix. And uh, so my routine and my rhythm has to change. And so I've scheduled my Bible reading into a different part of my day. But like I said, if mornings aren't your things, don't sweat it. Um, that you read God's Word is more important than when you read God's Word. Uh, pray before you begin. So we've just talked about prayer and how we can read scripture and prayer together. So when we are reading our Bible, pray. Um, open God's word and ask it to speak to you. Uh, and then we get to um, understand that. In Jeremiah 29, 13, it says, You will seek me and you will find me. If you seek me with all of your heart, God loves to reveal himself to those who seek him. So when we pray and when we read our scripture together and when we seek God's face, he will reveal himself to us. The last one is write it down. If there's um, things that, um, I love to ask these two questions about when I'm reading scripture. Uh, the first is, what does it teach me about God? What does this scripture teach me about God? And the second is, what does it teach me about how I should live my life? And if we take scripture in short chunks and apply these two questions to it, the scriptures start to come alive. And when we write these things down and we can go back to them and study them and understand them, uh, God continues to reveal different things through those scriptures that we get to read. The Bible was never meant to merely inform us, but the Bible is here to transform us. 
So when we dive deep into God's word, it becomes transformative in our lives. When we ask, what does uh, this teach me about God? And what does this teach me about how I should live? And when we respond to that, the Bible becomes transformative in our lives. So we've had praying, we've had reading the Bible. Uh, The third one, this is a very controversial topic and I love it. Uh, because it is controversial, it's worship, okay? Um, true worship involves surrendering our whole being to God. Do you know you can worship without music? That's cool. However, music is an avenue to worship that can direct your heart to the Lord. Now, I believe that God created music for this purpose, it says in Job 38, uh, 4 to 7, uh, Where were you when I laid the foundations of the, of the earth? Tell me, if you know so much, who, determines its, who determined its dimensions and stretched out the surveying line? What supports its foundations? Who laid the cornerstones? As the morning stars sang together, all the angels, sorry, so, as the morning stars sang together, all and all of the angels shouted for joy. So in this time, as Jesus was creating the world together, the angels were singing out and praising his name. Before God even created the earth and all that's in it, uh, including its humanity, he created angels to worship with song. The Psalms uh, include over a hundred references to singing and to music. Obviously, music is important to God. In Psalm 96, verse 1, here's a little example. Sing a new song to the Lord. Let the whole earth sing uh, with joy to the Lord. So singing is important to Jesus, but it's not the only way that we can worship him. I want to touch a little bit this morning uh, around some of these verses so we can worship Jesus with music which is amazing. We've just talked about that. We can uh, worship through prayer. I'm not going to go into this because I've just talked to you about prayer. And we can worship the Lord with our prayers. Um, God delights to hear our heart in prayer. And when we use these simple words, um, God will take our words of adoration as worship to him. We can offer uh, praise and thanksgiving to our God. Worship through praise and thanksgiving. There are more than 250 verses in scripture that speak of praise, almost 150 in the Psalms alone, to give you just one little taste. Hallelujah, my soul, praise the Lord. I praise the Lord all my life. I will sing my, uh, my God, I will sing to my God as long as I live. That's from Psalm 146, one to two. So that is such an, a joyous thing. Hallelujah. I love that word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise means simply telling God how great he is. Praising him for his love, for his forgiveness, his patience, his creation, his gifts, and for everything. We get to praise him. We also get to have hearts full of thanksgiving. Uh, Thanksgiving is similar, but instead of praising him for who he is, uh, we get to express gratitude for what he has done for us. (laughs) I got two eyes. Uh, That's good for me. Uh, I thank him that there's a roof over my head. I thank him that I have food on the table. I thank him that I have uh, a beautiful family. I thank him that I have this body of Christ together um, to worship with. I thank you that he is my savior. We need to thank him for the things that he has done. So we get to thank and we get to worship God through thanksgiving uh, and through praise. We get to uh, worship God through the confession of our sins. Sin breaks the heart of our Father. He weeps to see his children making wrong choices, just as any loving parent would. 
But he has made a way for us. He has redeemed us. It's through Jesus. If you're a child of God, if you know Jesus and ask him into your life, all you need to do is admit your sins to him. Ask for his cleansing. Commit to not sinning again. And that doesn't mean that you won't sin again. But it's a, it's a serious attitude for us to go, we are committed to trying with your spirit, Jesus, to be the best that we can. We can worship God through our confession of sin. We can worship God through the word. I'm not going to spend any more time on this. Uh, through a scripture, through the Bible, we can worship God in this place. Reading scriptures out loud, we can worship him through there. We can worship the Lord through silence. It's my favorite one. Uh, If you know me, I um, I love awkward silences because I get really giddy in them and I'm like, this is cool. Um, We've had people on our staff team before that as soon as, um, or I've worked in with youth ministry, that as soon as someone has stopped praying for more than uh, 0.6 of a second, they say, amen, because they don't like sitting in the middle of that silent space. I love it. I love it. (laughs) Music, prayer, praise, thanksgiving, confession, all ways that we can speak to God. But God doesn't just listen to you and to me. He also speaks to us. The two uh, most common ways for God to speak is through this, the word of God, and when we sit in silence. Being silent before the Lord is, also, is so important. Silence is, is almost a lost art in our culture. While, uh, even while we go for a walk outside, we hear the, the birds singing and the, the trees uh, moving all around of us. Uh, we hear cars. We hear people. Uh, we hear that annoying dog. Ruff, 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 ruff. That's what happens. Uh, Lots of us, when we go for a walk, we put headphones in and we uh, get to listen to our favorite podcast or to our music. And these things are good. God speaks to us through these things. But the truth is, God still speaks to us when we are still and when we are quiet. Learning to be still takes effort and intention. I once went on a retreat uh, where they said, for three hours, we are going to be silent uh, who, who, who here, I'll just show our hands, who here, that's the worst nightmare? Oh, a few of us, yeah. Uh, who would love that, actually? Who would love to go to a retreat and not talk? Oh, this is cool. Um, thanks, introverts in the room. No. Um, <laughs> uh, and it was hard work, you know. There was these people that you sit there and you just see them sitting on this chair going, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. They weren't singing because they weren't allowed to talk in this moment. But you could see it going through their brains that... Um, They don't know what to do in the midst of silence. And I tell you, it takes practice. And it takes intentionality. But when we learn to sit with God in the silence, he will speak. When we learn to tune our ears to what he is saying in the midst of the silence, he will speak. Now, don't say go and start with three hours, okay? Uh, Unless that's, that's you. Start with 10 minutes. Turn everything off and sit and listen to God. We get to worship through uh, Thanksgiving and service. Um, a few weeks ago, um, I got to talk around um, the end of Philippians where we got to celebrate you guys and thank you guys for the work that um, we do together as, as the body of Christ. And when we worship the Lord with our hearts and serving and giving um, together, we get, to, um, we get to see and get to experience what God has for us through serving and through giving. I simply want to say this morning on this, uh, when you give of your time or of your money or of something else, give with a heart that is gracious and give with a heart that is honoring to God. Because remember, God has already given to us in abundance. So we can worship the Lord through giving and through serving. Uh, Two more people, two more in worship. There's lots of different ways to worship. Worship the Lord through nature. 
uh, worship, worshiping the Father through spending time in his creation. We talked earlier about he is the creator of the world. He has created everything. Nature testifies to the spectacular, amazing, creative powers of the Lord and his greatness of glory. As you walk out in the street and through the park, I talked about it earlier, we get to praise God uh, for the pee waka waka that are fluttering around all over the place. Uh, they, they've, they come into our, into our um, verandas and our decks and they go, oh, hi, and they fly away. We get to uh, hear the tuis and the bellbirds as they sing uh, beautiful songs. We get to um, thank God for the turning seasons and then them turning back to rain again um, this week. That was great. We get to praise God in the turning of the seasons. Uh, we get to thank God for the oxygen that we breathe. Uh, the sun that shines, the blue sky that's outside today. As we worship God through nature, we get to let nature do its job in helping point us back to the one who created it. The heavens declare the glory of God and the expanse proclaims the work of his hands. It's talking about the creation of the world. It's from Psalm 19 verse 1. The last one that we worship through this morning is our daily lives. God doesn't, um, does not despise small offerings. We talked about um, in prayer that God likes our simple prayers. So in the dailiness of life, worship the Lord by being faithful in the small jobs that he has given you. Maybe doing the laundry, maybe doing the dishes, maybe working at a job that you just barely tolerate or one that you love. Maybe raising your children or paying your bills. Faithfulness in the small things result in larger opportunities to be faithful. What, God, uh, what does worshipping in the daily life look like? Here's some examples. I'll uh, just shoot some of them. Um, praying for God, <laughs> praying for your children who you've just finished doing the dishes and then they go and dirty three more. Praying uh, that you've just finished hanging all the washing on the line and they decide to go and kick a soccer ball against it. This is my list of um, worshipping in my daily life. Thank you, God, for a healthy family when we're fixing our meals, when we're making dinner. Let's thank God for our families. Listen to God speak to you in the quiet and as you commute, as you turn off all the other noises, as you sing worship songs in your car. Spend time in prayer for those who are less fortunate than us. And after you, uh, so to do that after you've just finished paying your, your bills, your power bill. Or pray for those who are less fortunate after we give our tithes and offerings to our church. Ask him to show you creative ways to worship him throughout the day, and he will. Worship should be a specific time, uh, sorry, shouldn't just be a specific time in our day or our week where we come and worship here but we can worship God in all that we do. When we, when a, um, a heart that turns to God throughout the day, and when we turn to God throughout the day in praise, in prayer, in service, uh, this is a heart that is worshipping of God who deserves all praise. And the last one this morning, you'll be good to know, I'm on the last page, here we go. Community. Community is so important to worship to, for our pathway to intimacy. So we're talking about these pathways to God, and you sit there and go, isn't my relationship with God my relationship with God? And the answer is yes. But we get to share this with a community, with our church, with our faith community, where we get to uh, share and journey and life together. Intimacy with God is not an isolated experience. The body of believers play a crucial role in our spiritual journey. Fellowship, accountability, and shared worship experience contribute to a richer and a deeper connection with God. So the call to intimacy with God is an invitation to be transformed and it's a transformative and a fulfilling relationship. As we prioritize prayer, as we delve into his word, as we engage in heartfelt worship and foster a sense of community, we position ourselves to experience the profound joy 
of drawing close to the divine, divine presence. This week, may our hearts be stirred to seek God with a fire that surpasses all other pursuits. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. That church is my prayer for you this week. Jesus, I just want to thank you uh, for your word to us. Lord, I want to thank you that um, you desire to have relationship with us. You desire to, uh, to go deep with us, not to scratch the surface, not to be acquaintances, but to know us um, and to, to dwell with us. And so God, as we um, look to, to press into you in this season that we are in, Jesus, may you draw near to us. God, the promise that you have for us is that when we uh, press into you, Jesus, when we draw close to you through these inter- uh, and want you in our life intimately, Jesus, you will draw near to us and you will dwell with us. And we thank you for that promise, Jesus. We give you praise and glory for you're an amazing God. And we bless you. Amen.